Hello, hello, and thank you for tuning in to this episode of Wild Virginia Virtual Coffee Talk. I'm your host, Katie Keller, and today I'm really excited. We have Alex on the line with us. She is the owner of Dogwood Refillery out of Charlottesville. It's a conscious market offering low waste and bulk refill goods for you and your family to live a more sustainable and plastic free life. So this is actually how I got my start in environmental activism, encouraging others to think a little bit more about their consumer choices. So it is near and dear to my heart. And so it's better for the planet. It's better for you. So today we're going to talk all about plastics. So thank you, Alex, for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you for having me. Wonderful. So let's talk about your passion behind Dogwood Refillery and how it got started. Yeah, so I moved to Charlottesville about seven years ago to work at Apex Clean Energy, the wind and solar developer downtown um, Charlottesville. And by just being in Charlottesville and talking with my coworkers, I started to become a lot more aware of the impact of everyday decisions I was making. And I just always knew that I loved the earth, but I just had no idea. I just wasn't conscious. And that's why I do call dog water fillery a conscious market. I wanted to, over the years, just kind of help educate people about, like, kind of like pit it forward almost, like just meeting friends who use DSAs or compost just helped me become more aware of that. But Charlottesville offers so many great resources from local farmers, consignment shops, composting, there wasn't a real solution to reducing plastic through refilling. We had very little options. And so this nagging pull to be, to like focus my career more on sustainability was with me for the past two years. And I finally decided to take the plunge and open dog water fillery um, just last August. So a conscious market, just helping people chat about things, but then providing a place for people to refill. That's so wonderful. And so obviously there are a ton of benefits of bulk stores like yours in terms of reducing the plastic waste that's getting into our oceans. And, you know, you see little birdies and other critters with plastic in their mouths on the trail and it's just so sad. So what are some other benefits of a bulk store like yours? Yeah. So the you know main one is that you can continue to reuse the plastic containers you already have, if that's a choice of your, some people would rather just kind of eliminate plastic completely and, you know, take their containers to ensure it gets recycled through McIntyre recycling, start new with either um, we offer glass or aluminum containers that you can also reuse. And what's great about that, you know, like you said, little birdies, how it ends up in a landfill or oceans, but also the thought that plastic is created from fossil fuels. Like we, is not just the end state of what to do with all our plastic, but the beginning state is not eco-friendly. Um, it's very toxic to begin with. And another benefit is that majority of my suppliers actually refill my containers too. That's one um, reason you're going to see some names in my store, like suppliers that you might not recognize. I'm supporting other small businesses around the East Coast that prioritize non-toxic ingredients and refilling. So I get to refill my plastic containers that I use to distribute to consumers here in Charlottesville. And then I think another underlying benefit that a lot of people don't think about is that you can try a sample without producing waste. Like you think about all these like sample sets you might get from Sephora, other big brands, and you can just bring your container in, try a little bit. There's no need to fill it up all the way. And then you prevent waste by maybe you don't like that product and maybe you want to try something else, but you don't end up being stuck with something that you don't want and you just end up throwing it away. Sure. I mean, definitely something I think that happens in a lot of households. I actually, one of the quotes that sort of inspired me to get into this sort of work, it's pretty amazing that our society has reached a point where the effort necessary to extract oil from the ground, ship it to a refinery, turn it into plastic, shape it appropriately, truck it to a store, buy it and bring it home is considered to be less effort than what it takes to just wash the spoon when you're done with it. And so 
it really just goes to show how our society has gotten into this sort of impulsive buying culture and how plastics, you know, their relationship to that has really sort of dirtied the earth. Impulsive and convenience culture. I mean, it's just so convenient, right? And I think that's one thing that we need to kind of re reshape our thinking around sometimes. Absolutely. So let's talk about the chemicals associated with uh, plastic or plastic products that are in plastic. So any examples you can note here? Yeah. So tying in, like I said, the fossil fuel involved with plastics, you know, you hear now, like, you want to get things that don't have BPA. Um, there's so many other things around with that. If you keep it out in the sun, it gets warm. You're basically leaching microplastics into whatever you're, you know, drinking. Oh my gosh, like water bottles by far the worst. You know, you're paying for what a resource that's free, um, but yet you're getting additional microplastics with that. But outside of even the plastic itself, a lot of chemicals that I see and I purposely avoid or a lot of my suppliers will be like, we don't use X, Y, Z artificial coloring. You know, Dawn is like one of the biggest ones. They get people by putting cute baby animals like baby ducks or even penguins, which I'm a, I'm very partial to penguins, love penguins on, you know, their labels and have all these like bright colors. Like that's completely unnecessary. It's horrible for our waterways, for respiratory, for, you know, kids and adults. Um, also, you know, Dawn does this, but either bigger companies too, that you think are clean, uh, like my Mrs. Myers or seven generation use a lot of preservatives because they are producing so much soap and they're wanting to keep it, you know, from getting moldy or contaminated, which I understand, but there's so many preservative options out there and a lot of them go with the cheapest one. And those are also horrible for the environment. Something that I really strive to, um, support small business that don't use those. Um, another one is like surfactants. Uh, it's very, it doesn't look like how it spells. I was like, how to keep your eyes. I'll have, um, <laughs> spell that, but you know, it's important for soap. And, um, I know we're going to probably talk about this later about local impacts, but when it ends up in our waterways, it kills like fish and wildlife. And it's just so unnecessary. And there's plenty of suppliers who are being more conscious, you know, even though it's like a smaller level, like big companies like Dawn, um, Unilever, like they could make these changes, but it's, you know, capitalism and their priorities aren't in the right place. And then um, the last thing I wanted to share about like chemicals, specifically when it comes to cosmetics alone, like the U.S. has only banned 11 chemicals, like by the FDA, it's what can be used in our products. 11, like that's more than like, that's just shy of two, you know, hands worth of chemicals. And then Canada has banned over 600 wow. in Europe has banned 1300. It's shocking, you know, that we allow so many toxic ingredients into things that we put like on our skin, on our face, on our children. And I think so, you know, many of us like in America think about, okay, we want to make sure we eat organic or at least things that don't have a bunch of pesticides on them. And like, we're really conscious for the most part of like what goes into our bodies. But then when it comes to what's going on our skin, which is absorbed, which is just as important about what we're eating, we, we lose sight of that. Well, you know, you mentioned local impacts and, you know, news when you speak about microplastics, I know that they, you know, have found these microplastics and fish now. And, you know, here at wild Virginia, we talk about when one part of the ecosystem falls, the whole thing you mm -hmm. know, either has to adapt or doesn't, and it can be extremely detrimental. And so even though Wild Virginia doesn't necessarily like do cleanups or activism behind plastics specifically, uh, it does relate to our greater environment and what Wild Virginia does in protecting these natural places and species. So let's talk about recent news and local impacts and how you know, what Dogwood Refillery does and advocates for and how that relates to, you know, what happens with Wild Virginia's campaigns. Yeah, one thing that like hit really close to home, um, I think it was the news just about 
Earlier this month, but it happened early April, was that in near Meadow Creek, I believe, there were mm-hmm. 842 fish, 130 salamanders, and 40 worms were all found dead. And they're not entirely sure on what the cause was, but they're like, it's most likely one of the surf surfactants, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a uh, mouthful, but like what you find like in soap, the toxic ingredients that you can find in soap that we're all used to using. I mean, it's, this is like right down the street from, um, a lot of us like near like the barracks road area. And so I think, and I hope that this even which is so sad, like helps be like, oh, wow, it does hit close to home. You know, we see like oil spills happen all the time and it feels so far away. Um, but this has like an effect. Sure. That's something to remember. I mean, like you said, Meadow Creek, very close to home. I used to work very close to over there and I would walk, you know, through those trails and, you know, it, it's net, it's litter everywhere, but it's even the things that perhaps you don't see yes. they are happening in your backyard. So changing your lifestyle can be super intimidating. I know when I really made a conscious decision to start reducing, you know, plastic waste and transitioning, you know, solely to glass or something like that, it's super intimidating. And I'm recently a new mother. And so that even makes it harder to, you know, these decisions when everything is put in plastic or packaged in plastic or, you know, made of plastic. So let's talk about some simple steps that consumers can take to, you know, not only better themselves, but the planet as well. And maybe some realistic steps. Cause like I said, it's very intimidating and folks, I feel like are more inclined to shut it down if you know, it is so, so let's talk about those simple steps. Yes, for sure. And I think it's just all about realizing, you know, zero waste is not, it, realistic in the way that today's society is like you said everything is wrapped in plastic and I think it's just kind of doing because everyone's different too like everyone has the things that they maybe feel guilty about and where they want to start with and I think it's just like one step at a time um one thing for me personally was I stopped eating like individual yogurt and string cheese, you know, with like mm-hmm. single use plastic is one of the ones you just kind of want to like aim to get out immediately. Um, and that also was aligned with just thinking about, okay, where is this dairy coming from? You know, so that had an addition to plastic also just like environmentally, like for these like animals from like big farming, that's like also not good and creates a lot of carbon emissions. Um, also where is it traveling from? So even though it seems like one simple thing, you break, you reduce your carbon emissions significantly, um, especially when I was eating that every single day. Um, but it's just all about being conscious and just like rethinking the way we shop, consume and live being a conscious consumer, you know, as you said, like, it's one of the things that you've always have like close to you and important, um, reusing things that you already have, you know, you don't have to go and like, start brand new. You don't have to go and buy a bunch of new things. Just kind of rethink things that you already have. Can you repurpose them for something different? Even if it is plastic, like so many of my um, customers say like, yes, I would love to invest in a stasher bag, which are these silicones that block bags that we have, which are great because you can have the dishwasher, you can microwave them. It's a Ziploc or a plastic bag replacement and silicone is non-toxic. So it's a really great solution, but I have customers who are like, I just keep reusing the Ziplocs that I already have. I, you know, just rinse them out, hang them to dry. I'm like, that's amazing. And again, taking something that's like intended to be single use and reusing it, you already have it. Doesn't cost you anything. That is gonna save you money long run, right? Um, and then just kind of repairing things versus being like, oh, this small little thing doesn't work perfectly anymore or mending our clothes um, to make them last longer. Those are easy things that we can, are gonna take a little bit more time, shift your mindset, but things you can do today um, that will that will change and have a great impact and save you money, right? Like that's mm-hmm. what's so great about it. Um, and of course, refilling, like going dog water fillery, I want it to be easy for you. So it's like, you can, bring your products in to refill all purpose cleaner and laundry detergent. Like I have some customers who make a lot of that on their own and not everybody has like 
the means or the, you know, skill set or the time to learn how to do that. Um, or like cleaning with vinegar is also, you know, a great al- opportunity, but I just provide a place like, Hey, this is easy. Just all purpose cleaner. It's ready to go. Like just refill what you already have. Um, I, you know, just, I think those are kind of like the main ones. Obviously the list can go on and on. And like a lot of it is the like re like the reusing, the repurposing, refilling, rethinking. Um, I don't really mention recycling because I think that there's a lot of nuances there and in a way with all the changing, um, rules around recycling that can even be intimidating. I think a lot of wish cycling happens. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, it's, it's hard to keep up with. So if you prevent waste or the need to recycle, you're not going to have to worry about that. Absolutely. Well, and those are some great options. And, you know, you start out with, with one choice, you, you start rethinking that you don't have to tackle the world at once. Right. It's, it's hard for a human to do that. Start, uh, start with replacing your plastic razors with uh, straight razors or um, you know, start thinking about buying that, you know, larger container of yogurt instead of the single, yes. single options. So you can't, you can't tackle it all at once. Of course, that's intimidating, but those are some great options in addition to coming to Dogwood Refillery. So I love those. So like I say, you, you can't do it all at once, but we do have some pretty notorious plastic haters online, which I feel like make it a little more intimidating, but I do love some of the ones that I follow um, on Instagram, Plastic Free Mermaid. She offers really great, helpful tips. So would you have any that our listen, listeners should check out that, that you like to follow? Oh, I haven't even heard of Plastic Free Mermaid. I'm going to have to check that out myself. <laughs> um, I think... One that I'm sure you've probably heard of going zero waste. Mm -hmm. Is that one that you follow? I love she she does. She has a blog. She has like a lot of great videos that are really helpful. And again, it could be either something that you purchase, like swapping out your plastic um, razor and investing in um, a straight razor or safety razor. And like the other thing about that is those things are going to last you so much longer. Um, It might be like an upfront investment, but in the long run, you're saving money. Another like plastic hater slash educator, they don't do as much on Instagram, a little bit more on Facebook, but their website and their documentary is great is story of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, They always, they have like little short clips and I think that they're really uh, informative, easy to share too. I think that's, what's really great again about like just talking, I guess it's also kind of like backtracks into what you can simple steps you can take. One thing I really like is Catherine Hayhoe. She did a Ted talk about like the biggest thing you can do to help climate change is just talking about it. And again, like that's why I am where I am today was just being influenced by hearing what my coworkers or the Charlottesville community were doing. And it's shaped in the way that I like started looking at what I do, what I could do better. Wonderful. Well, everyone should definitely go check those folks out. So Alex, I really appreciate you joining me today for this episode. Any closing thoughts that you'd like to share with our listeners? Yeah. So I realized maybe I didn't share. I talked a lot about refilling and um, things that you can refill are, you know, everyday cleaning from laundry, dish soaps to face wash, um, sunscreen, which is really important right now. Um, And then I offer a lot of low waste swaps. So things that you don't really have to change your lifestyle as much. Like I mentioned the Sasher bags or looking at instead of using plastic for cleaning your dishes, bamboo or wood, um, just a lot of really accessible, easy swaps you can make. And you can find me in Simple Square Plaza. I'm right off 29 North by Whole Foods. And please check out my website. You can follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. And I'm really, you know, thank you so much for having me join this podcast. Wild Virginia is amazing. And what you do is so important. And I'm so excited to be part of this community on a larger scale versus just somebody, you know, who was a Wild Virginia member. And um, I'm excited to bring, you know, more to our community. Excellent. Well, we really couldn't do it without business partners like Dogwood Refillery. So while Virginia members actually get 10% off at the store, so you need to become a member if you're not, and you definitely need to go check them out. 
So be sure to head into the store, but for more information on what you can do to protect our environment, you can visit wildvirginia.org.